20,000 campuses around the world that emanate from this office. Um, we have 30,000 hours of masters downstairs and we have schools all over the world and part of our desire is to develop people for ministry. I mean that's the passion of our hearts. Now um, most of the time local churches will will you know take on that role but um, Abundant Living is a close family connection and friend of ours and churches that are large sometimes have their own procedures and everything else but if we have the approval of the senior pastor, which Pastor Diego has given his full backing and authority. And um, and we have also the recognition that all the qualifications for ministry have been met and um, that there is a, uh, there's been a proven track record of integrity, of commitment, of um, service and uh, and what we do in ordination is very much recognize the gift and the call of God that is already on a person. We're not creating something. We are uh, recognizing, part partnering with God in, in, in giving human credibility to something that God's already given. That's really the way I look at it. So um, that's, uh, um, that's the recommendation that you come to us. You, you have the recommendation of both your senior pastor and of Sharon Takaha, who is has partnered with us for more than a decade and, and uh, um, has run one of the most incredible programs that we have anywhere uh, around the world and um, has become a, tr a trusted uh, friend and a trusted uh, co-worker in the kingdom of God. And so... Um, so with that endorsement, we want to ordain you into the ministry and we want to, um, to lay hands on you. We want to pray for you. And um, I do want to uh, just read a few scriptures that, that uh, I feel like are, are relevant. Um, passion of my heart is the Word of God. And the number one criteria for me of a minister is somebody who knows how to handle the Word of God somebody who knows how to minister the Word of God, somebody who knows how to, um, um, what can I say, to teach the Word, to, to, to impart the Word, and to impart the truth of the Word. And, um, and you know, I, I just finished studying this, just, I released this book in February, um, Pursuing Maturity, I encourage you to get a copy of it, just because of some of the things that it shares. And um, probably the greatest, um, sort of relationship ministerially between um, a church leader and a pastor is um, Paul's relationship with Timothy. And many of those, um, if, if, you, if you ever need to have encouragement in your faith and encouragement as you go forward and you step into a role of ministry, um, go back and read First and Second Timothy because Paul is just speaking to a young minister and he's speaking life and he's speaking truth. And um, so I'm just going to read a few verses from that. And um, these are some of the verses that I think are very important as you step into that role. I understand that you did a, uh, a wedding this, this weekend. And did that go okay? It went well. And, um, you know, and so that is just your putting your feet in the water and stepping to that place. In fact, your ordination is as of the 24th that you are ordained and we're just sealing it right now as we as we have this uh, short ceremony here. Um, but Paul writes to Timothy and I'm just going to read these. These words are timeless. They're for today as much as they were when they were spoken here or they were written. Um, Paul writes and says, Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless foolish discussions with those who oppose you um, with their so-called knowledge. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. And so just guarding what God's given you. And you've had a good foundation and you've had, you know, you've had good roots and good truth that's been put into you. Guard it, protect it, all right? And then he writes again, hold on to the pattern of wholesome teaching that you've learned. And it says from him, uh, from Paul to Timothy, a pattern shaped by the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious truth that's been entrusted to you. Again, this idea is that just because you've been given truth doesn't mean it can't be taken from you. That you can't fall into error, that you can't go into something which is, you know, a lot of 
Uh, I'm in the reading, middle of reading the Kings. I'm in Chronicles right now. The first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, and I, I just they put the fear of God on me because so few people finished well. Out of the children of Israel, you know, over a million people came out of the promise, out of the out of Egypt, out of the slavery under Pharaoh, which is a picture of sin. Only two of them made it into the promised land, and uh, so. There's the sense of guarding, protecting, holding on to what you have. Um, and then he says this, you've heard me teach things, and Paul's writing to Timothy, and I believe you've heard this being taught by many of your instructors and many of the those who have sown into your life. He says, you've heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. And so that 2 Timothy 2.2 2 is like, you know, teach faithful people to do and to teach faithful people so you want this to be generational you want to pass it down you don't want to hold on to it and just you know you know just glory in it you want to actually take whatever god's given you want to pass it to the next generation and you want to train them so that they can teach the next generation that this thing will be generational and will pass down um, and then paul writes work hard so that you can present yourself to god and receive his approval be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly explains the word of truth, and avoid worthless and foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. That kind of talk spreads like a cancer. And you know, there's a you know, we recently went through a situation in one of the work uh, environments that we had, not in this office, but in another one that I'm very close with and know, where there was a lot of strife, and the Lord gave us one scripture: "Cast out the scoffer, and contention will cease." And one person voluntarily left and you know with all their complaining and everything else and instantly we've had not we've had peace since then it just you know you have to watch and make sure that 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 contention and that 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 foolish stuff does not keep coming in all right and you got to be careful of that um, you don't ever want to corrupt what you have um, this gives you also another way to deal with those type of people Paul writes this is gently instruct those who oppose the truth you are going to have people that are going to oppose you. And, you know, people think, well, because I'm a minister, you know, everything's going to be great and, and easy sailing. But it's not. It is a war. You know, fight the good fight of faith. And it's, it's going to be a war from the moment that you step in and you, you now represent Christ as a minister. And to the day Jesus comes, it's going to be a war. It's going to be a battle. And sometimes when opposition comes, instead of you know, fighting it and, and, and reacting and responding in kind, you need to just gently, you know, explain the truth, all right? Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts. They will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's traps, for they've been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. So, yeah, welcome, guys. And then maybe some chairs over here you can just bring in here. And, uh... Looks like you attracted uh, a lot of followers here. <laughs> These are your 12 disciples. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, Paul's giving different ways to deal with the, the types of things that you're going to face as you step into ministry that some will oppose you. Some will, you know, fight you. Some will, um, you know, argue with whether what you're saying is true, especially when you're taking stands for the kingdom of God. And we're in an environment in a day to, in an age right now where, you know, to be a, to be a minister is going to become more and more dangerous and more and more difficult because just taking a stand, a stand on marriage or a stand on on just about every social issue that's out there, whether it's abortion or whatever it is, and, and standing for truth and standing for life and standing for God's word, you know, people will not blame God; they'll blame you. <laughs> You know, and they'll say, you know, they'll call you every kind of name. And, and all you have to do is that in the end of the day, you're going to have to stand before God and answer for what you teach and what you bring forth. And uh, having the courage to have your convictions and to stand and not to bend and not to react, not to respond. Um, there's a famous minister, his name is Wellington Boone. Um, and he's, um, you know, one of my favorite guys and and. He's the one who wrote, he said, uh, it's not who you are, but who you help others become that makes the most difference. All right. But he also says that he and his churches, I believe he's based, uh, I believe out of Atlanta. And um, 
and he, he, he puts his people through what he calls worm training. And so he actually has them carry a, a, a plastic worm in their pockets. And this is all of his ministers and his leaders. And, and uh, so well, why would he do that? He says, I want you to learn to be a worm that can be easily crushed and not a snake that strikes back. And so his worm training is more to teach people, you know, it's okay, you know, it's okay when, when you get crushed. It's okay when people step on you. It's going to be okay when things don't strike back. Don't allow that to get to you. Don't allow it, as Reinhardt says, don't allow it to scratch at you. All right? It's, it's something that, that God will enable you to take. Jesus took this beating. He took the suffering. He did it to give us an example of how we deal with opposition. Amen? And then I just want one last scripture here. It says, but you must remain faithful to the things you've been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and I hope that's true of you, that you've been taught them from childhood, and they've given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong, teaches us to do what is right, and God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work and so you know in fact i'm going to do one last scripture i know most pastors will always say this is the last one and they have three more <laughs> right but this is the last one uh, paul writes this these words and he says i solemnly urge you in the presence of god and in christ and christ jesus who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom preach the word of god be prepared whether the time is favorable or not Bible in another version says in season out of season patiently correct rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching they'll follow their own desires will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear they will reject the truth and chase after myths and so he's saying to them stay true to the word and um, that's probably the hallmark of what we as a ministry do we just teach the word we bring the word of god we get the greatest teaching we can find and we bring it to the ends of the earth we're in 150 nations and we're we're just passionate about the truth of god's word because it will never change it will never alter and it will always do the job and i'm praying that as we ordain you under this grace under this anointing um you're not being ordained under good shepherd ministries uh as as the missions organization but we have gsmi church which is the international church which is an umbrella organization that, that is a church entity that has the authority to license and to ordain people to ministry. But it is the DNA of Good Shepherd Ministries that is under the, that's the covering that you are coming under in your ordination. I pray that you represent the Word of God. You don't have to represent us, but you have to represent the Word of God. And as you represent the Good Shepherd, that you will be a, a Good Shepherd. And the number one criteria is feeding God's word. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yeah, I love you, Jesus. Yes, he said, didn't say worship me more. He didn't say pray more. He didn't say read your Bible more. You love me, Jesus said, feed the sheep, feed the lambs, feed the sheep. The number one criteria of a, of a minister of the gospel is to feed the word of God to people. That's before building wells and doing orphanages and all the other things, all wonderful things, but the Word of God must be number one. Amen? Amen. So let's stretch our hands towards Carolyn. We have her uh, uh, ordination a credential here, and I thank Corbin for you know doing the, made this work. Where's Corbin over there? Over here. I see him somewhere there. Ah, in the back, yeah. Corbin, um, you did a wonderful job with this, but um, this is um, this will certify that the bearer here has been fully ordained by GSMI Church with all rights and privileges to perform all duties of the work of ministry under the authority of God the Father and in the name of Jesus Christ we hereby ordain Carolyn L. Clark for the office of ordained minister in testimony whereof the seal of GSMI Church and the signatures of its offices here unto a fixed this 26th day of July 2019. So 26th, that was three days ago. 
which was I think Friday, which was the day before you had did the wedding. So um, anyway, um, so this is what we're gonna we're gonna be with this. We're laying hands on you, and we're sealing this ordination in God's eyes, and um, we're believing God to to place upon you a, a, a new anointing, a new grace, a new authority, and a new ability as well to step into that place of ministry and to represent the name of Christ as well as to perform the what they call sacerdotal duties which are to marry and to bury and to um, perform uh, ministry, um, to, to get, uh, issue communion, to uh, be able to preach the word of God and um, to lay hands on people as well as to perform the ministry of the church uh, that, that a, a leader and a minister of the gospel needs to be able to do. So some of those things you'll learn to do as you learned this weekend as you step into that role and you think it's automatic but actually there's a lot of things to learn as you go into ministry and uh, I know that you will you will step in, in, a, in a good way and that you'll represent the church well. Amen. Amen. So stretch out our hands. Let's pray for her. Father, I thank you for uh, Carolyn. Thank you for Lord, her faithfulness. Thank you that God, we just recognize the the gift and calling upon her life. We thank you that we today can ordain her, and that we God can, Lord, um, represent your mantle onto her life, Lord God, and to step into a role of ordained minister. And Lord, I thank you, God, that she that she has the full backing and blessing, Father, of the leadership of her church. And the leadership, Father, of the of the school of ministry that uh, that you've placed her under, a God that just used that you've used to uh, bring the word of God into her life. And Lord, I just pray, Father, for a new anointing upon her life. I pray for Lord, and even an apostolic grace to come upon her life. I pray, Father, for the gifts and the callings of God to be released into her life. I ask you, Father, that you, God, would use her. That you give her new wisdom, new understanding, new grace. Uh, Lord, I pray that the Spirit of God would be rest upon her, that you would mightily use her for your glory, for your kingdom. And Father, that you would seal this ordination with your hand and your blessing and your anointing. And so, Father, we commit her to you and we, uh, we set her in place and we set her in order. We recognize the gift and calling on her life. And I thank you. That not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit, Father, that you bring these things to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So congratulations. God bless you. Let's give her a hand. All right. So let's take a picture here, and we'll have a few pictures in my office in a, in a short time. So. Sure you post it to Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs>